I am uh, Ryan Holywell from GW as well. And uh, I was just hoping you could elaborate a little bit on, um, you know, a lot of these things we see about Google, about um, what they're doing in China and the concerns over Gmail. I've, you know, I've read a lot about and I know a lot about. Can you elaborate on the, the stuff you've written about Google buying thousands and thousands of personal computers and uh, is using them for, for processing? I, I don't really understand what, what they're doing with that. Great question. Um, two, two questions, really. Um, I'll answer the second one first. Um, one of the discoveries that I made in reporting and writing the Google story uh, was that Google not only provides uh, an online search engine that is powered by software that has lots of mathematical information and codes and other things written into it, but Google today, according to the president of Stanford University, John Hennessy, is the most powerful computing enterprise on the planet. The reason for that is that Google also assembles its own personal computers. And throughout the world, Google has deployed hundreds and hundreds of thousands of PCs, and they're stacked in big racks. They've stripped them down um, so that all that they contain is what they need to do one thing well, and that's search. Ever notice that when you do a Google search, you always get a response? and you never kind of get an error message or you don't get the blue screen of death that says fatal error. The reason is because Google has so many data centers that if there's a problem at one data center, the search gets pushed to somewhere else. And these PCs are stacked and they're linked uh, very carefully. Peter Norvig, the director of search quality at Google, told me we're like Dell. It's just that nobody knows it. So they assemble uh, an enormous, they're in the hardware business in a way, in the software business, because the scale of Google is so massive, with billions of people around the world using it, and billions of searches occurring, uh, it, they can ensure lower cost and higher quality by putting together their own PCs, and then by deploying these in data warehouses. And um, in the Google story, I coin a new phrase, uh, the optimal uh, combination of hardware and software at Google, and I call that Googleware. And it's the software and the, and the computing hardware together that produce these relevant instant search results that all of us have come to know and appreciate as a kind of instant gratification for the mind. Uh, your second question has to do with China and Google's entry into China. Um, Google is a global business. Um, Google has a mission, and that mission is to organize all of the world's information and make it universally accessible. China has a government that uh, practices censorship. And censorship is at odds with Google's mission. And censorship is at odds with Google's motto, don't be evil. So they thought long and hard at Google about what to do. And for a long time, people in China could only search using Google based on uh, a search engine uh, that was outside the United States and computer, uh, computers that were outside the United States. The problem with that is that the, the search results had to go through what's known as the Great Firewall of China. Not the Great Wall of China, but the Great Firewall of China, which the Chinese government has built with the help of other U.S. technology uh, to screen out all the stuff it doesn't want. So the responses were slow and they weren't uh, competitive really in China with other local search engines or with Yahoo and others who had entered the market there. So Google thought long and hard, how do we balance our desire to share and spread information with this issue of censorship? And ultimately, they finally decided to enter China uh, recently, but to do something differently than anyone else had ever done. On every page, when someone searches in China, if someone searches for democracy or Tiananmen Square or something that the Chinese government would censor, uh, the page that comes up on Google says, this page has been censored. Uh, the Chinese government does not particularly like this. Uh, they threaten to pull Google's license over this. It's radically different than anything Yahoo or Microsoft or anyone else operating in China uh, has ever done before. The other thing that Google did was it did not go into China when it set up its data servers and computers there with anything that could be personally traced to an individual because Yahoo had someone who was arrested when they used uh, Yahoo's technology there, and they were identified as a dissident who was, they believed, speaking out against the government. Google has only gone in there with Google search uh, and things that are uh, not identifiable, not traceable. And Sergey Brin told me that he's very troubled by having to give in to Chinese censorship. 
Um, but they had to ask the question, in the long run, um, will the people of China be better off or worse off if we're in China? And in the long run, will Google, the enterprise, be better off or worse off? Google, uh, China is the second largest internet market after the United States. There's over 100 million internet users. So if you're going to organize all the world's information and make it universally accessible, you've got to be a player in China. And this is not the only country where Google has to live uh, by some degree of censorship or change in the nature of its business. But it is the most important and largest example because there are more than a billion people in China. It's the largest uh, potential uh, resource of information and future expertise probably of any nation that we know in the world today. So they made the decision on a somewhat troubled basis after much internal discussion and dialogue to go in, but to do so in a different and in a measured way.